Okay, so um, we've done our handstands. And we did a certain amount of prep to try and make sure that we create the right movement. We then done an awful lot of stuff around learning how to actually control our body whilst we're upside down. But then that last bit being about strength, trying to be strong getting into this position. The human flag is we're taking that same movement. So we shouldn't, we're going straight into it, so we shouldn't need to necessarily prep out and move out for it. If you were doing a, um, a standalone human flag session, you would probably do something to work on this overhead mobility, overhead range of motion that you've got the same as you would do for your handstand. Job we've got to do is then be strong, but not upside down. We're going to take ourselves out horizontally. So three main things we're going to work on. We'll break it down and we'll build it back up. When we first wanted to try and learn the human flag, I think I originally thought it was Photoshop when I seen it done. Tim, with his dislocated shoulder, used, the first time I did it, he put his arm down and he went, Mate, that's the place I used to dislocate my shoulder in. Now, I didn't know him. We'd not even been known each other that long. I'd come from my rugby background of literally, mate, shut up, crack on, like, let's just have a go at it. If I'd have known the chances of him dislocating his shoulder in that overhead position, I'd have just gone, well, let's not do that. Like, don't, that's going to be, we don't want bad things to happen, like, because that's going to affect, like, everything we're going to do, just, like, work-wise and whatnot. But luckily, I had a stupid rugby mentality still because I'd only just finished playing rugby. And we did it and alongside the work with uh, handstand improving, as I said, overhead shoulder stability and strength you can produce. You need that same quality of shoulder uh, stability, particularly in that bottom arm that's going to act as an anchor. It's going to be anchoring down and you're pushing away. Just like when we're upside down in the handstand and we're pushing the floor away to make ourselves nice and long. It's that same push away there. The top arm is cranking down. So we're going through some active hang positions, but the job is to try and pull that shoulder blade down and connect it in towards the hip on that top side. And that's the, the third portion. The final part, getting that hip then to connect upwards. If the hip can connect up and pull up, that lateral trunk strength to pull ourselves up, that's what keeps you out horizontal. So push, pull, hip driving up. As long as your legs stay connected to your hips, which they should do, then you're going to get yourself out horizontal. It's just then we've got to get into good shape. So the flexibility to get into this position through, if I can't open this bottom shoulder up because we're tight, just like in a handstand, I'm not going to be able to create the shape. I need that good position to be my stable foundation. And then I've got to then just crank in some strength. Really strong pushing, really strong pulling, connecting the hip on that top side. So if I can put those things uh, together, I got a clap. Um, the world record's one minute and six seconds. By this massive, no, tiny little Japanese dude. <laughs> um, so, when we, when we, so when we were trying to learn, we went, that, okay, how, how do we do that? Go on YouTube, how to do a human flag. There was a guy like, literally gave his phone to his missus and go, film this, we're gonna do a tutorial, human flag, you ready? Dun, just did one. And we went, okay, well, I now know that you can do one, but you haven't shown, haven't explained it at all to us. Um, so one thing we've not necessarily talked about an awful lot so far this weekend is background before we did any calisthenics at all was Tim had been doing five years of S&C in the Paralympic sport. I joined that coaching team with him. And in, when we're training Paralympic athletes, you can't just do squat, bench, deadlift, or, you know, if we've got a sprinter, we should be doing deadlift, we should be doing power cleans, as the textbook would say, um, and we should be doing squats. But when someone's got, you know, uh, through knee amputee, you can't do those things. So we have to change the training environment to suit them to get the same result. So we were used to problem solving. So what we ended up, we went, okay, well, what do you need to do in a flag? Problem solved it. It was going like, right, we need these three things. And then it starts to go, where am I weak in those things? And build then exercises to match those things. Work on them separately to build up the strength of those three components. We need to do something to give us the chance to feel that movement pattern. So connecting those three together. And then we've got to spend some time getting strong in, in those shapes. So the same sort of process, but just a different, different position. The nice thing about it linking from the handstand is, it is a handstand shape. It's just different components in terms of strength. Yeah. So, one of the first, um, we've done quite, you know, some of the stuff we were doing in the warm-ups on the floor when we were going on one side and coming out. Some of that's quite nice because we're opening the shoulder up and getting used to being on one arm. That's starting to get you 
used to this shape where we're externally rotated so arm opened up it gives us the chance to get there in a really nice position and we want the head of that humerus driving in to the body so we've been doing a little bit of that already so we'll uh, i'll show you one other thing on the floor but the thing we haven't touched on yet because we haven't done any necessarily pulling is the the difference between a dead hang where i'm just resting completely slack and active so rather than my ears being by my shoulders i used to get bullied at school for having big ears so my job is to try and show you them but i'm a bit I was still a bit sensitive about it but, um i'm trying to drive my shoulder blades down to raise me up nothing coming from the elbow all just coming from the shoulder blade so like mid lower traps to drive those down my job on the human flag is i must be able to do that and then let go gradually if i can and be able to hold on that one side and create still creating tension if i lose that and slump <laughs> internal rotators those pecs and lats that are tight will wind me inwards my job is to pull and set yeah so i'm creating torque that external rotation that's hard to do and fighting against all those tight internal rotators and driving keeping that down that's that's pulling that shoulder blade down into a nice position that i'm then able to create force from and that's straight arm pulling strength um so that's the active hang for the push the sorry for the for the pull on that top side the bottom the bottom arm we're going to get into just something like really specific for this uh, flag so as i said we've done some of those crawling patterns where we've moved and, and we've explored some of this so it's not too alien but we're just going to position the arm into that open position so twist of the fingers are pointing a little bit more backwards your job then is making again that we're not slumping so that same principles are going to apply push yourself away and then i want that bottom arm to create more of a an angle position that the arms are in any human flag so any human flag you make more like a triangle with the hands so rather than being a, a sort of side plank, I'm going to slide myself away. And then I'm going to try and push up and lift myself away. If I want to, I can go get used to driving out of that position. So coming down, driving through and away. I want to make it harder woo, from a stability point of view. Put both feet on top of each other. Come down, open up, drive away. Sorry, can you repeat what is the difference between this and side plank? So in the side plank, you're going to have that arm vertical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here I'm driving away. So I'm coming at an angle. And then what my job is, I've got to get used to, rather than being closed, opening that chest up. It exposes you nice and strong and tight in here. That's an exposed position, but that's where we need to be strong. If you can't open this bottom arm, if I stay here, chest facing towards sort of the bar on the floor, and I can't open that up and I'm not stable in that position, it's not going to be a strong anchor for you to push down on. That push and that pull are two opposite forces. Two opposite forces create torque. Torque is what leverages those hips up. Yeah, just wanna show that one. If you wanna create a little bit of extra overload, we can put the weight, you got it? So kettlebell on the back of the wrist. One thing I really like about this exercise is you can see the reflexive shoulder stability. So we talk about control around the joint. Jack is having to work hard to control the shoulder or the humeral head inside the socket on the fossa, the, the, uh, on the scapula, sorry. So nice little progression, you can play around with it, but it's just not only is it good for our human flag practice, but it's also good for just creating really stable shoulders because we're getting some exposure to instability. Nice little reflexive drill. This one actually was side plank though, right? Like I was trying to... This one you didn't have the... So I'm trying to slide myself more, more, more. Away, 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 away. Yeah? Your arm isn't vertical in the human... Like, when you do a human flag? I'm making a triangle. Yeah, does that make sense? I'm not vertical. The point of this is that those exercises are that we, if they fall into our movement preparation or pattern, sorry, so they're starting to create the skill component of what shape do I need to be into, and then you can start to think about how much force you're going to produce in that shape. But you need to create that that position to begin with. Okay, so we go both then. So single arm hangs, active and hangs, and it's a bit of T push at work. Push up. Still make sure we train both sides of everything, even when one feels better than the other. Like your and Jim's quite asked a great question of which, if I've got a strongest arm, which one should I have it at the bottom or at the top? And the reality is, for you to hold yourself out horizontally, the torque that raises you up needs to be two equal forces. But they just need to be equally very, 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 very high. So it doesn't, 
You might feel better with it on one than the other, um, but it's not to say you should put your strongest, like if I'm right-handed, that you should have your right hand at the bottom or your right hand at the top. It's just gonna, it's, it's gonna depend on various factors that are related to you and your sort of strength. But just the main thing, the main takeaway is make sure you train both sides equally. You don't wanna get an imbalance, yeah? Your Even more though stable shoulder is probably going to feel more comfortable on the bottom. My left yeah. shoulder is arguably, the, well, it's ironically, the one I've had surgery on, but that's my preferred bottom one. My right shoulder, because I never did as much rehab on it, is the one that I can flag on it, but I don't like it as much. But if I don't train it, I'm just causing massive problems. So, And also, when you're on holiday, you want to take a photo, you don't know which side you're going to need, so it's good <laughs> to have both. That's the real reason. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes. like, These my, are the important problems that we have to face. <laughs> my, my best side is right under the top. Which but is then good, the bar over here, sort of double, and I was like, opposite. you all stood there, I've got to do it this way. But it's good, it's good to, it's good to make yourself do what you don't want to do. Um, right, so um, we need to then look at connecting that hip. So we've done bottom arm pushing, top arm pulling in a relatively uh, safe, easy environment that we're not too stressed about. Some of the, the stability and balance in that single arm position on the floor was uh, difficult for some of us uh, potentially but it's not too not too sort of super hard my job is might come around so you can see it come around the the front a little bit whether you're whether you're doing this with a pure single arm position i want you to try and raise not raise your feet i want you to pull your hip to that active hang on that side and feel that your hip is what's going to raise your leg up. It might be that you need to do that with one or two fingers on the other side as you're just building up, but just focus it gives you the chance to feel that shape and the idea that you can raise your legs by what you do at your hip. And until you get that connection between that shoulder setting or pulling into a good position that you can create force from, you get to pull up from there. If this is slack on the top, you've got nothing to pull towards. The same way if you're doing like, um, if I'm trying to do like a toast to bar, if my shoulders are uh, in a dead position, uh, that's as high as I can get my legs. When I set the shoulders, boom, I've got something to pull against. Yeah? It's like when you run on sand, super hard because you haven't got anything stable to push against. Um, let's have a quick go at that, and then we'll bring it together. This is difficult because everyone sees you on a stability ball, and goes, well, that must be easy, because you're lying on a stability ball. But the ball moves about, so it might be when you get your partner to start with, or me or Tim, to come and just steady the ball a little bit for you when you're setting up, but they can eventually let go of you. But the fact that it moves around gives you a little bit of a stability challenge. But the main thing is it's going to support our centre of mass so that we can feel the whole thing. So remember the three things, bottom arm push him in a nice open position, so he's not closed down, shoulder, uh, chest to the point to the floor, he's pushing that through. Handstand shape, yeah? Top arm pulling actively, so active hang, what we've just done, shoulder blade pulling down. And then he's gonna try and connect the hip up to that, so he's got push, pull, and when he raises the hip up, more, 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 we get pulling here, then the legs start to raise up. So we're gonna feel this section here. So let the feet go down, lose that bit, and then pull the back up. Yeah, he's not raising the feet, he's raising the hip to that top arm pull. Yeah. That gives you a chance to feel those three things in action. Yeah, you're gonna feel an awful lot through that top side on this exercise, and less so through the bottom. That gives you a chance to feel the whole thing. The other, another second one I'm gonna show you to do, and you can have a play at both of these, is um, on here, angle flag. Um, again, just come forward a little bit so you can see a bit more comfortably. Um, <coughs> trying to be out fully horizontal is the most difficult in terms of fighting gravity. If I'm at an angle, so 45 degrees, there's less of me up fully away from that pivot point. So I'm just reducing that distance there. So it's a little bit easier at 45 degrees. I can create that angle by taking my top hand, rather than being on the vertical pole, on the, just a little bit further away. The closer that top arm is to here, the more chance I have, if I'm strong enough, to pull myself all the way up. But my job then is to put these three things into action. So, 
chest not facing the bar, chest opened up. So even just getting used to that, pushing away and getting feeling that uh, bottom arm position. See how that's the same as that T push up, but I'm just hanging from the bar. Once I'm in there, pushing hard away, top arm then pulls in, see that action? And then hip pulling up. But what I want us all to do is make the uh, strength easier by shortening that leave length. So you're in here, you open up, make it easier by pulling those levers in, knees to the knees to the chest, which you can, top arm pull and then hips up. And this is the biggest part I want you to get to. You get to here, but now I've got to get those hips up to that action there. Boom. That's the missing link for most of us. Once we've got the push and the pull, we don't really do anything in the gym where we work that lateral trunk strength in a maximal sort of strength isometric position like that. Yeah. Have a go at those two things. One of the, one of the things that's really important is that I can get this hip super high. No point in me hanging out here when I need to be getting somewhere up there. So, yeah. so the job <coughs> is can I create how do I progressively build this up once I've done that angle flag position? I'll let her finish. It's my birthday last week. <laughs> so, a couple of things I can do to, to progressively change this. I've got two options. Always, not try, always making sure you're getting that hip super high, nice and high is one, I can move my hand closer to the upright. Closer I get to the upright, I can then probably get that close to horizontal. So that's one way to get myself in there. The other thing is then changing my lever length. So I can go into, say like a single leg position, or I can go from that real tuck position to straightening them out gradually. But as you can see, ooh, there's no point in me straightening them, straightening them, straightening them, if that hip just keeps dropping further and further down. You're gonna build up way more specific strength, training the position you want to be in, which is cranking that hip nice and high up. So that's ways you can scale those. Um, we, what we, we talk as like, as a, as a general sort of arbitrary number of like, a minimum of, of five seconds of trying to, of when we're trying to do an isometric, just so we're getting enough time under tension to be able to create an adaptation that we want. If we just come into a position where we just sort of kick up and I go, they go to 10 sets of 0.1 of a second, I've got one second of tension, there's a pretty crappy position. It's not really gonna um, give me the strength adaptation over a number of weeks that I want. Um, but saying that, the, the, some of us then need to look at how do I get into, um, into a position where I start to use this full vertical bar. So to start with, with what we call like a, a vertical flag, can you just create this shape where you're not holding the top bar and just dangle, yeah? Next up, can actually get up into that tuck position. And then you wanna be able to hold, hold that tuck in the same way we were doing that and then progressively build out your lever length. So having one leg straight, one leg. Bent, and you can move. What's nice when you have that position, like the top uh, knee on top, that then lets you progressively change that position. So you actually know, right, last week I had my heel on my knee. Now I've moved a little bit further. You can progressively change that. Um, and then was the last question about coming down. And up. Yeah, Flavia was just asking about, she said we don't, we don't do a lot, she doesn't see us doing a lot of lowers. Um, so some people kick up high and lowering. Jacko's done a bit of that. I don't, I don't like it because of the position it puts my shoulder. I don't want all my weight in that position, which I used to think was going to be a big problem for me. So I, I generally avoid it and just pull into it. But um, it is an option to go up and then stack your body weight over the base support, which doesn't require a lot of strength. It's just a, an unusual position. And then just lower down. You can ramp the force there as you come down closer to the horizontal. Yeah. So we can use, we can use um, whether you're tucked or whether you're single leg, or even you can straddle before you go for the full thing. Um, in that same, in that say, use those progressions in that same medium. <coughs> what, um, what Chad had a question about, he's always, he said he was done, learnt it by lowering down, that um, 
what we want to make sure that we do have is we want we want to have strength not just in one portion As soon as I say something, it's good. We don't want to have strength just from the top down to halfway. We want to have strength through the full range of motion that we're trying to work through. So even when you're lowering down, controlling that lower. Um, but as Tim said, I haven't done this for a while. But once you're into there, you're stacking yourself on that, on that um, bottom arm. You can hold there for quite a while. And lowering down slowly, but even when you lower down to your, your hold, but even controlling that last portion rather than just falling down. Like the idea of having strength all the way through, much, much better. Yeah, but you can lower, you can, we can certainly lower down. What's difficult for people is getting up into that top position for a lot of the time. You can use it, like eccentrics can be used, but you don't have to. Yeah, it's not a necessity. So I would say the last portion now is to play around with some of those positions, get some coaching for me and Tim and get to a point where you feel that you are be able to create a good amount of tension in a good position that, that you found where that level is and know where you want to go to next. Yep. The flag we talk about is, like Jacket tells me, I say it's easy. It's not that complicated. You get to a point where you find out where your level is and it's just a matter of building strength in that position. Um, and you've got to put time on task. Same with anything, you've got to earn that right to progress to the next one by just building that strength and chipping away at progressing through to, to um, ultimately be able to extend that lever position out.